Again, we have speakers on time, so there's plenty of room for questions. Um, I'm wondering if you want to set up with the other. Do you have a question? Okay. Go ahead. No. Have, have you tested my ventilation? No. no Give me some more tested. No, no, no. Everything I presented is my data. Everything has been published excepting for the nicotine data. That manuscript is being written. We, have, we haven't actually finished all the experiments yet. But this is a work in progress. That's great because uh, if the nicotine acid has stimulated that growth in vitro, we could be also very helpful for the diagnostics and other stuff to improve the recovery of viable cells from the... What, what a pleasure to see someone who's listening to my data and follows my thought processes. I agree with you. Okay. So it will be published. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I would hope to get the manuscript out within about a month. For, for those of you in the other side of the room, I think we just heard about the proposal of Mick Middlebrook nicotinic acid. Is that correct? <laughs> um, I think, was there a question down here from Ingrid? And then there'll be questions up. Absolutely no. not. Has this been done in animals? Uh, well, I'm sorry, what is the question? Have these agents been used in animals? Well, um, the, the, there are a variety of answers to that. One of which is the monensin, which the veterinary community calls a growth enhancer because it increases milk production and increases weight, has always been called a growth enhancer. What I'm showing is it's an anti-paratuberculosis bacteria static antibiotic. So to that extent, in, in all of these, conceptually, it's a paradox. We're going from the bedside to the bench. Normally it happens the other way around. What we've done is we've gone to clinical medicine and clinical, clinical veterinary work and said what agents are being tested and then we brought them back into the lab and see if they inhibit paratuberculosis. I'd like to make two comments, one of which is that these studies were done with a system that is being phased out, the BACTEC 460. And I can tell you that at least 80% of these data would not have been detected using other systems. It is exquisitely sensitive. And the second thing is I'd like to acknowledge Beckton Dickinson. These are all unfunded studies. The only support that we've had have been the BACTEC virus from BD, and I thank you. Excellent point about the BACTEC. Another question? Is there a risk that even though you try and in vitro activity, in fact, in vivo, uh, because the, the, the compounds actually have to get into an intracellular site, in fact, they may not be effective in vivo? It, well, so well, the question for the people in the back is whether these in vitro assays of really extracellular bacteria in log phase growth in the laboratory are pertinent for an intracellular infection in the host. And, and the simple answer is I've already given it, is this is the paradox. We went from the bedside to the bench. We took agents which are used without a known mechanism of action, but simply because of clinical efficacy. And we then used our system to see whether it inhibited that. Now, the, the 5-ASA hypothesis wasn't original. There was a paper published in 1988 by a, a, a Dutchman, and Kroeninger, no, it wasn't a fan, something or other, one of the bands. And he, he, he used, he used a, an, a, an agar slope system and didn't see it. So everything that we show is dependent upon the sensitivity of the asset. But clinically, they all work. It's just no one understands the mechanism. And that's why we think that paratuberculosis might be the cause of these diseases. As an ethically Dutch person, I'd like to point out that we don't all have a name that starts with Van. Um, there's one more question. So 
the question was about the differential growth rate of amavium and MAP and how it would have affected the in vitro assay. Do you, do you use the back test system? The, 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 way, the way that it works is every day two needles go into the bottle and they sweep out the gas and you see amount, the amount of 14 carbon CO2 that's produced. And the Bactec system has a range of 0 to 999. It's an arbitrary scale designed by the manufacturer. And what we do is we just keep going every day until one isolate gets to 999. And then that particular experiment is over. That's why the numbers differ. Some of them might only be a cumulative index of 1,500, but some of them might be 5,000. And having got one isolate, which goes off scale, we then take all the data from the previous day and add it together. So there's a different growth rate for every single organism, and we stop, we stop the experiment when it goes off scale for that organism. I believe I saw a hand over there. Yeah, I was just going to say, monensin and other ion forces like lysyl acid are also pretty good uh, toxicocytal drugs, and that may go to how effective they are in the cell. I will additionally tell you, because I, I had that on the left hand side of one side, I will additionally tell you, you, you can't present all your data in, in, in a 15 minute talk, but monensin is in fact bactericidal against TB. I didn't present the data. It's, it, it is a very potent antibiotic. Uh, so what was the question? Okay. And to your right, you have a question now? Yeah. How do the internal observations you have relate to low and high traffic tissue observations? So how do the constitutions used in vitro uh, project to what would be observed in the tissue in a patient in a clinic? The, the, the simple answer is there are no data. And there are no data because um, if they're doing levels, for example, with uh, cyclosporin A, it's blood levels, not tissue levels. All I can tell you is the following. The way we identified the agents we wanted to study was they were already clinically effective. So that's how we started out. What we do find is there is a parallelism between the empirical dose which is given to people because that's the dose at which it works and how potent it is in our test system. And the best example I can give is the 5-ASA and the methotrexate. That if you look at, if you, if you actually get down and look at the data, that 5-ASA is about at least a thousand fold less effective than methotrexate in our system, and the dosage clinically is about a thousand fold higher for 5-ASA than it is for methotrexate. It, it's actually amazing to me how nicely the, the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle fit together. Great. Okay, thank you everybody for these excellent questions. Thank you.